Okay, just kind of uh, crudely set up the switch track to show the operation of it with the cover off. And again, that's th a three wire connection. If you have the Marx controller, the little control panel, you take two wires from your transformer, and I have an old 50 water over here. And it has an accessory side and a train side. And what is the number on this thing? It's 12, 1249. Model 1249. It's an old one. Now, back to uh, our control panel. Basically, from the accessory side of your transformer, you're going to hook up, let's see, two transformer, your two wires. And again, you can color code these wires. There's two sides on the control panel for multiple switch tracks, which is kind of good. But over here, it says red, black, and green. And again, I'm just using white and black wire. That's what I had laying around. And then you hook those three leads to the color-coded leads on your switch track. Now, very simply, you know, got to make sure those are on the right leads or it won't work at all. Um, you press your button and track switches over. And again, now you can see, for those who have never seen one apart, what's going on. And that armature, basically, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Pull it in. And the tab underneath moves the track over. It's very simple. Simple and sturdy design, like most of Mark's accessories and trains. Very sturdy. And I'm switching it back and forth here. Now, I think you can get a little bit of a picture here. There it is. Where you can see the slot I was talking about earlier. It's a little slot horizontally at the end of that diagonal slot. And if your arm, the armature, at coming out of that solenoid does not make it to the end of that slot where it locks in then that's where a problem occurs with a lot of a lot of times with this the switch track like for here I'm trying to right there for example I switch that and I didn't I didn't hold it down uh, for but but a second and well it's still locked in for me but if this if this falls a little bit short of locking in what happens is you, know, you get to that towards the end of that stroke but not all the way and your train comes down the line and this is not locked in okay and as I wiggle that you can see what's going on with that, that plate there it needs to get all the way to the end of that stroke for that to be in there okay and again see the action of that zoomed out a little bit and this one actually works very very good you can see the windings are are pretty bright in good shape but I have a couple that are pretty tired, and I, I built a trans, well, I would say more of a power supply for it for this very reason, okay? And I'll end up showing that in a little bit here. But that is the basic operation, and bear in mind if uh, you have a, a switch track that's a little beat up, and the windings maybe got a little bit cooked, overheated over time, uh, a lot of the times it doesn't have enough oomph to get into that lock, locking portion of the slot and then that's what happens your track doesn't get completely flipped over like for example right there I just, I just kind of short shot it so to speak and you see it's not locked in your locomotive and your train comes by and it crashes it derails and uh, that's no fun for anybody so we'll uh, kind of show the difference on our next segment and some different things you can do but but for a lot of times it's it's just it's just more power you know whether you're adding a capacitor system or a different uh, power supply and again these are pretty crude windings like I had said um, they can handle a little bit more voltage than than actually rated simply because they're pretty crude you can, you can see that that uh, I don't know it's, it's hard the lights not perfect here but you can see it a little bumpy and they're probably hand wound at a factory so um, it's awesome because they they just work so good they don't have to be perfect and exact because they they can handle very you know various voltages and again that's all alternating current from the factory it's not DC okay so we'll finish up on our okay here is what I built to kind of uh, help my switch track situation and obviously something like this isn't for the novice uh, electrician so to speak but it is a little uh, power supply and I made it out of a uh, sheet metal box I drilled holes up here for ventilation and I have a couple different outputs over here, I just use Romex style connectors 
and basically lamp cord here just for to have a test stand and also uh, to power my accessories I also put an idiot light and that's a power on light uh, if we're going to be politically correct I guess suppose and uh, held a little with a couple sheet metal screws on the back here is a power in cord and that is just some SO cord to a plug that we plug in the wall so I'm going to open this up and give you an idea of what I did for this but I used an AC uh, transformer and it, it has plenty of punch. This thing's pretty okay, big. So we're going to take the lid off here of the power supply. And pretty simple. I just used a, a, it's a pretty big honking transformer. It's probably overkill for what I need, but I had it laying around. I bought it a few years ago for another project that I never used it for. And it's not plugged in, so, um, you know, we're working safe here. But it basically uh, has an AC side in. Uh, I did over here. I fused it, the in, you know the uh, line side, and um, let's see, look here, power inside and the line side for the output voltage. Okay, and like I said, it's probably overkill. If you have a good transformer, you don't need this. But I found that my 50 water uh, is a little bit tired. You know, it's old, and so I built this uh, just as a test device, and again uh, to run all my accessories too. So it's, it's pretty decent. I have it uh, fused at 5 amps over here. Uh, just to be safe, I didn't think we needed 15 full amps of house circuit to run some accessories and testing. And it switches the track really nice. Uh, it's got a lot of oomph. So for, for people that are, you know, I had a question too. Can you use a constant voltage versus a variable voltage? You know, I think the accessory side um, on my transformer, my Mark's transformer, the 1249 uh, says something like 6 to 13 volts. Well, this is a constant 15.29 uh, on my meter uh, volts AC. So yeah, you can use a static power supply. So if you if if you have a little um, knowledge in this area, you got something laying around. This works really nice, and it's definitely uh, plenty if you have a little bit of a tired switch track to put something together like this. So. That's about it for my little tutorial, and um, I think I'll plug this in and show you how it works. It really, um, you know, I probably should have grabbed one of my other switch tracks over here that was really sluggish to try uh, on the transformer, because uh, two out of the three were actually, these two here were the ones that were hanging up, and this one actually worked the best, so it, it probably wasn't the best, uh, you know, video display of a of, of failure of one of these but I think it's pretty good explanation. Okay, I just plugged in my power supply and there's the uh, power on indicator light, idiot light if you will and uh, I'm gonna take these leads here and if I zap myself this is gonna be more like a comedy video I think but you can see what I like about this is it's got plenty of juice to switch these over and uh, let's see if I get a little better light here while I'm doing this. Okay, that's already switched over there. But you hear, hear how it's loading up that solenoid really nice. And uh, that thing is slamming over. And, and for people who are having problems with their tracks locking in, this is really nice. See that? And again, it's not so much... Hey, there's a little spark there just because it's not connected. Um, it's not so much that it's going to cook these windings either. See that? There. There. And it's totally slamming that plate in right here. And that, that's what you want. So, guys, I hope that helps. This is Mr. Brianiac, or Brian from Girard, and we'll talk to you soon.